afternoon and welcome to our today's seminar. My name is Alessandro Lombardo. As you may understand from my name, I am Italian and I am the head of the Seabones International Relations Department. Today, we are very happy to present the first international bond issuance performed by TBA Bank, uh, which is a Bulgarian bank headquartered in Sofia. Uh, well, 10% expected yield. Uh, well, that seems really attractive. So let me present you to our today's guest. I am the pleasure to be today with Mr. Piotr Baron, uh, CEO of TBI Financial Services, Lucas Tursa, Head of Funding at TBI Bank, and Kostin Minkovci, uh, Chief Credit Officer at TBI Bank. Welcome, everyone, to this today's seminar. Alessandro, thank you. Hello. Hello, colleagues. So uh, before uh, starting with the presentation of the bank itself about this uh, specific bond issuance, uh, let me uh, provide a very small introduction about the bank itself. Uh, well, I'd say, as, as I said, TBI Bank is headquartered in Sofia in Bulgaria and is a mobile first challenger bank in Southeast Europe and regional leader in alternative payment solutions. Uh, TBI is well known as one of the most profitable and efficient financial institutions in Southeast Southern Europe. So uh, it is a, as well a regional pioneer in alternative payment solutions and is building an ecosystem by combining financing and shopping to address customers' needs. Uh, TBI Bank holds currently a BA2 rating by Moody's with its anticipated bond issue rated BA3. Uh, colleagues, before leaving you the floor, so let me just very quickly introduce a few details about your first international bond, which will be in euro, dedicated to a professional audience and with a minimal settlement amount of 100,000 euros. So uh, I leave you the floor. We can meet a bit later for some questions regarding the bond itself. My name is Peter. Uh, I am, uh, I'm British, uh, over 20 years in uh, retail banking and fintech. Uh, TBI is the second uh, bank that I have a pleasure and honor of building together with a team. Uh, and I have uh, become CEO of uh, uh, TBI uh, in 2016 when the bank took on a new strategy. Lucas. Thank you, Peter. I'm Lucas Tursa. I come from Lithuania, Vilnius. Uh, I've been doing funding all my professional life. Uh, I have mixed experience in the public sector. In the past, I used to run the treasury of the government of Lithuania. So I come from LIBOR minus environment, and now I have the pleasure uh, giving more to investors with uh, LIBOR, whatever you say. So, uh, Kostin. Good afternoon. My name is Kostin Minkovic, Romanian. I'm in charge of credit risk in TBA. Um, 20 plus years experience in credit risk, both in uh, banking system and fintechs. Uh, I'm a data-driven professional and I've joined TBA back in 2019. Peter? First of all, what's important for you guys to know about TBI? TBI is uh, the main challenger bank of Southeast Europe. Uh, we started our history in Bulgaria. Uh, today, we already operate in uh, five markets. Three markets we consider to be core markets. That's Bulgaria, Romania and Greece. Uh, Greece is our newest market and I'll talk a little bit about it down the line. We also operate in Germany and Lithuania, but in these markets, we operate uh, with through partners. Uh, in uh, uh, Germany, we uh, operate uh, through Raisin for deposit collection. In Lithuania, uh, we partner with our shareholder for finance uh, for loan issuance. The bank, uh, being a challenger bank, is very well recognized by local media because we're constantly innovating and bringing new solutions. The latest award that we are most proud of is Love Marks uh, um, uh, Award for Favorite Financial Institution in Bulgaria. On the right-hand side, you can see our dynamic financial indicators. I will not stop here, we'll follow on. Let's take to the next slide uh, because we'll be covering them down the line. The main business of a bank is retail lending. Uh, and here uh, you see on the left-hand side our historical growth uh, of the portfolio. Uh, as well as uh, the fact that the main growth is coming really from small retail loans. Uh, most of them are payment plans, uh, which we do through the checkout uh, of our partners. And I'll talk again in more detail about exactly how we do this. Uh, moving on to the next slide. So, uh, as Alessandro already mentioned, we have one of the most profitable banks uh, in Southeast Europe. Uh, having very solid uh, capital adequacy ratio and liquidity position. Majority uh, of uh, our clients in the loan book are covered actually by insurance. 
And our Lombok is now uh, over 900. These are the numbers. Uh, actually, we're now already creeping up to 1 billion. But at the six months, it was 915 million. As I mentioned, majority comes from retail loans. Uh, these loans are split uh, between um, uh, Bulgaria, Romania, and Greece. And again, we have retail business, which is 84% of our book, and 16% is coming from business, uh, business, business banking. Uh, in, uh, two in 2023, uh, six months, we processed over 1.1 million applications. Uh, and what's most important here is that majority of them are already coming from self-service channels, whether it's online, our mobile app, uh, or merchant and store business. And only 9% are coming from our uh, manned branch uh, locations. Our merchant partner network keeps on growing. It's now over, um, and again, on six months data, because I will remember the existing numbers. Uh, it's already over 21,000 uh, locations. And this is from uh, largest e-commerce players, uh, likes of Imag, uh, equivalent of Amazon uh, in Southeast Europe, uh, belongs to Naspers. Uh, or Scrouge.gr, largest um, marketplace in Greece, all the way to uh, mom and pop st uh, stores somewhere in, in Stara Zagora in Bulgaria. Uh, so we're really agnostic in a way we kind of um, um, merchants with whom we can partner and support in, the, in, the, in their growth. And all this business is supported by uh, savings uh, proposition, uh, mainly term deposits. Moving on. So as I mentioned, the bank is really split on two business lines. On one side, we have merchant side of the business where our goal uh, is really to support our merchants' growth, our partners' growth. We really focus on, on, on helping them to grow their GMV. Mainly, we do it for uh, alternative payment methods, uh, which range from anywhere from a three-month uh, product uh, all the way to um, a 60 month uh, product, depending, uh, depending on the vertical. And we keep on adding new and new solutions again in order to support uh, support their business. For example, uh, we now have just received our acquiring license. Uh, we support them with accounts, payments, etc., 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 etc. And on this side of the business, we already have 21,000 checkout points across the free markets. On the right side of the slide, uh, it's our consumer business, and here really we are driving our main proposition is our mobile wallet. Uh, our mo mobile wallet uh, has all the uh, standard uh, products that you would expect, like uh, IBAN, like card. Even though our card is quite unique, we designed it together with Visa as being uh, uh, part of a uh, fintech in a box uh, project. Um, we were the first bank actually in Southeast Europe to do it. Uh, it offers uh, instant euro payments. Again, we were the first bank in, uh, in um, Southeast Europe to launch instant euro payments. Uh, local utilities, uh, savings proposition, of course, but the main focus is really around lending products and ability for the customer uh, to uh, access uh, to money very, very quickly. And on this side of the business, uh, over five years, uh, uh, we have gathered over 2.2 million customers. Why five years? Because that's the GDPR line, because everybody represents customers in a very different way. We do it accordingly as having marketing consent and, and uh, data query consent. Moving on. Now, a little bit about our products. So on a consumer side, our key products are payment plans. As I, as I mentioned, they represent 60% of our retail uh, loan issuance. General purpose loans, that's 40% uh, of our, our issuance. Neon card, which is a unique uh, debit credit card that we launched and Visa is very excited about this. We believe this will be the future of cards going forward. Saving accounts and daily banking. As you can see, majority of these services are actually offered through the app and we're driving more and more for the app. We only have customer service centers, aka branches, uh, still in Bulgaria and Romania, where our customers still need them, but we're constantly reducing the floor, footprint, whilst in Greece, we already launched fully, fully digital. Now, as I mentioned, our focus is on near prime customers. That's, that's really kind of where, where we're positioning ourselves as an organization and focusing mainly. And of course, the key competitive advantage that we have is that we start our relationship with a customer uh, where it, in majority of cases, the first loan is already profitable for us. So we're not starting as typical nail bank start. Let's give everybody a free account. Let's give everybody a card. Let's give everything for free. No, in our case, actually, we are starting from a paid product. Uh, and then we are giving our customers premium daily banking so that they actually stay on a platform and continue using our services. Because actually every time that the customer logs in, I'll talk a little bit down the line, we're able to rescore him. So we're giving him the latest up-to-date, freshest amount of money that he can take in the app. 
which is very important for our business model. That's why we want customers to come back to us more often, and we're ready to subsidize um, uh, daily banking services. Just as an example to you, because we're running SEPA Instant on modern payment rails, we're using Bank of Lithuania for this, which are offering these fintech services. Uh, one payment uh, for uh, SEPA uh, uh, Instant cost to us 1.5 euro cents. So it's not a problem for us to subsidize as a cost for a customer to come back and constantly see his limit and eventually eventually start using it. Uh, of course, this is supported by uh, very advanced uh, risk and Castine will cover it in more details on a high level. We utilize over 760 data points uh, in order to be able to separate the goods from the bads. The mobile app is uh, extremely sexy from our, from, from our opinion, definitely stands out in the crowd to give our neon card. And we use a lot of technology you know, to, uh, behind it in order to really be able to communicate uh, with a customer and, and market to him in real, in real time, from chats to real-time marketing uh, tools. On the right-hand side of the slide, you can see our uh, split of our tenors and products, averages across the markets. The products are the same, but each market has slight nuances, whether regulatory or, let's say, in Greece, just average income is substantially higher than in Bulgaria, hence the average ticket is higher. So there are slight nuances, but the products are, are the same. On the business banking side, that's the next slide, please. We have two business lines. One is called TBI Pro. That's everything that helps our merchants to sell more. So uh, mainly around uh, 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 working lines for uh, our, our merchants um, to support them. We have long-standing relationships, so we have a lot of data about them. Uh, and we can really utilize kind of mainly technology solutions there. But there is also a, a historic part of the business, which was a business before uh, before finance acquisition, when the bank really took on a kind of a new strategy, uh, where we would work with mid-sized residential developers. And actually, it's the only part of our um, uh, loan book, which is collateralized. Uh, majority of our loan book is not collateralized. Uh, where uh, we usually enter where um, the building is already out of the ground, uh, so loan to value is usually around 50%. Uh, and for the, uh, for the developers, instead of selling the apartments at a discount, we only deal with residential, it's only apartments and, 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 and small townhouses, um, they can take a bridge loan from us and finish the building, because otherwise they would need to be selling at a discount, and for them it's much easier uh, just to get financing, finish rebuilding, and then still sell, sell, sell at full price. So it's a very nice niche, but it's not a very scalable business model, frankly. However, it's been very historically profitable for us. Um, cost of risk is almost zero there uh, because of loan to value uh, and because residential units are uh, ultimately extremely liquid. Moving on. Now, this is our funnel. As I mentioned, our funnel starts, uh, first of all, from the merchant checkout. We do direct to consumer as well. This is the first year, actually, we started doing it quite uh, more actively. But still, the majority of applications are coming from the merchants. Where this checkout could be, again, either it's e-commerce store, uh, either it's uh, uh, either it's in-store, and now it's already beginning to become really uh, part of uh, embedded finance story. And we are really deploying this in Greece now most actively, and I'll talk about it when I come, when I come, when I come to Greece. So the journey starts where the customer just wants uh, uh, goods or services, right? And as I mentioned, we are completely agnostic. Uh, we can work from uh, um, black and white goods uh, to uh, medical, education, uh, uh, secondhand auto, whatever it is. Right? So at this point, the customer doesn't really care about TBI. What they care about is really an ability to be able to split, uh, split, uh, split, uh, split their payments. Now, at the moment that they are uh, applying, Castine will score them, so let's say they want a Hoover, and the Hoover costs 400 euro, but Castine will see that they are actually good for 1,400. So as they are applying for the loan, we will push to them the app so that they can manage the loan when they take repay the loan, take payment holiday, change, uh, change, uh, change the duration of the loan. But behind that loan, there is an IBAN and there is a card. And most importantly, there is customer dynamic limit so that they are able to see that there is another thousand there already in a wallet, available to them. All they need to do is click a couple of buttons and that money will be on their account immediately they can go and spend. Or they can use it as part of their revolving line on the debit credit card. Uh, now, we will support it, of course, with a lot of technology. Uh, we are using BPC as a card processing system, for example, one for real-time marketing, Provenir for decision-making, Provenir is a tool 
uh, that, for example, um, uh, Apple uh, to give Goldman Sachs uh, users, we're actually very proud because we chose it six months before uh, it was announced uh, to, to be used for Apple. Uh, Klarna uses that tool um, as well. And then we'll use a lot of different campaigns in order to uh, re-engage the customers and keep them on the platform. So we'll use daily banking services, use our card, log back into the app, and whenever they need money, they know it is accessible there for them without any more having to go anywhere uh, to any branch call center or apply anywhere else for a loan. So this is exactly how the, how, how the journey uh, looks like. So at first, it will start from a loan management tool. So the customer just taken a loan, he needs to manage that loan somehow, right? He needs to repay it. Uh, in, the, in the app, there's going to be a card, customer dynamic limit, exactly as I mentioned, free uh, freemium daily banking, which we believe is going to be a very sticky proposition because in Bulgaria today uh, and Romania and Greece, uh, our competitors are charging for all daily banking services. For us, that's not really kind of where we make our money. We are focused on net interest margin. We are focused really on credit. So we don't mind really to kind of, to, again, subsidize this, this, this part of the business. Considering that we're doing it uh, on, already, on modern rails and technology, the cost is really not, not, not that significant for us. Plus, savings proposition, very important. We need to fund ourselves. Uh, and we like to fund ourselves with deposits uh, and, uh, and, and, and current accounts. Uh, we launched uh, this feature in May, uh, and actually, yeah, middle of May this, uh, this year. Uh, and uh, in October numbers, we are already seeing that 90% of uh, newly opened uh, deposits uh, in Bulgaria are already all opened and awarded. And the next feature that we're going to release is going to be in app shopping, where we uh, really want to bring together the proposition from our merchant partners and the ability for our customers to really shop in installments on everything they want inside, inside our app, therefore helping both the merchants sell more and our consumers get good deals. Now, our core markets of operation. I mentioned we operate in five markets, but our three core markets are Bulgaria, Romania, Greece. This is where we have uh, our stack present, uh, our teams on the, on, the, on the ground, where kind of really we have a full kind of proposition that we are building out uh, there. Uh, now, Greece being the newest market, we wanted to launch Greece uh, even before uh, um, COVID, uh, but COVID slowed us down a little bit and we launched, uh, we launched last, uh, last, last spring. We feel that it's a market with huge opportunity. Actually, it's, this market has already become a number one market by applications. But we're still taking it slow because we need to train the models. And uh, Kastin will talk a little bit more about this. It takes time. You know, We want to see the full cycle. But um, so far, the demand has been really uh, fantastic, both on the merchant side, where we signed up already over 3,000 uh, partners. Uh, just uh, a few months ago, there was an article from, uh, from a local general manager of Klarna in Greece, and he was talking about uh, uh, how proud they are that we signed up 300, right? So for us, it's very, uh, um, uh, a very, very nice sign because we truly believe that uh, regional challenges can compete with global players by having a pure focus on the market. Uh, because frankly, our way is not just an API way. We're able to integrate with, uh, with merchants in multiple ways. Um, uh, including truly embedded finance. So when I talk about some of the largest uh, digital players in Greece, uh, likes of Scrouge, uh, largest marketplace, 37 million visitors, we are on their checkout. Uh, Shopflix, second largest marketplace. Uh, Cardo.gr, second uh, auto, uh, largest auto uh, marketplace. Uh, Hellas Direct, largest digital insurance uh, company on, on the market. We are actually embedding ourselves into their mobile apps and their web journey. So we're not just there at a checkout, which was before done just through either direct integration or plugins, but here we're really prop already fully embedded with the real future of embedded finance, where you're able to actually integrate yourself into the customer journeys uh, of a large uh, ecosystem or uh, e-commerce or any kind of digital service uh, service providers. So for us, Greece offers a huge opportunity for growth. Um, merchants really there uh, were still having to do kind of uh, payment plans, but they had to do it from their own balance sheet. So uh, when somebody comes and does it professionally, they're relieved because they can free up the capital and actually focus on their main, main business and having professionals step in there. Moving on. Now, uh, a little bit about kind of uh, competition and um, here are three key segments of players that, uh, that we compete with. 
On one side, you have large incumbents. Uh, so these would be um, groups like Raiffeisen, and uh, KBC, Unicredit. Uh, these guys are very large banks, uh, big corporate business, big mortgage business, big leasing business. Um, and they really tend to operate mainly in the prime, uh, prime, prime space. Uh, then you have local players, uh, except maybe Transylvania, which is a very large bank. A majority of them are uh, under underinvested in terms of technology, in terms of people. They don't really have a long term strategy. They're part of certain groups, um, so um, we don't really see them as kind of major, ma- major, major players. And then you have international fintechs entering as well, likes of Klarna, likes of Revolut. Uh, and this is where we really believe that, um, you know, being focused on our markets um, helps us. Uh, and we see this generally where you have, uh, at first, you had a big wave of uh, kind of expansion of uh, global fintechs. And then local challenges are beginning to kind of muscle themselves in through sheer focus on the market, through being better integrated to local payment rails, uh, to uh, being better connected to the merchants, to understanding customers' needs better. Um, and here, a great example exactly of Klarna's uh, uh, success versus us, because they come and they have, you know, this is our API, this is how you integrate, right? We will do it in multiple ways. We'll have our uh, merchant enablers team to support marketing activities of merchants. We'll design the product around them. We'll have them embed that product into, into their customer journeys. A, fit, a, a one-fit-all approach just does, 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 does not work um, well enough. Uh, and you can imagine when uh, Nikolai or uh, Sebastian are sitting with their boards, first they're discussing what's happening in the US, what's happening in the UK, what's happening in Germany, Japan, India, etc. By the time they get to Bulgaria, Romania, Greece, you know, everybody's already tired and same happens to their resources. And at the end of the day, resources need to be focused on organization, whether they tech resources, marketing resources, uh, re-engagement resources, data resources, etc., etc., etc. Therefore, we believe there is quite a room for us to grow, and uh, our historic um, uh, performance indicates that we have been growing substantially higher than the market. Moving on. Now, on this slide, we're demonstrating our focus, really, kind of in terms of partnerships. As as an organization, we knew, uh, being a small player, that partnerships are very important for us. And innovation is key, being a challenger bank, we need to be constantly bringing new solutions and tools to, uh, to the customers. Our team is very international, so we see a lot of experiences of what works, what doesn't work in other markets. And we were first ones to launch e-commerce and uh, uh, deposits online, uh, digital onboarding uh, with tools like Confido, which are used by, again, likes of Revolut and Barclays, and to be honest now, already many, many large, large international players. Digital signature. Uh, we partner up with, uh, with uh, Cardiff uh, as an insurance provider. Uh, we partner with Raisin uh, to launch ourselves in Germany for deposit collection. And we continue partnering with merchants as kind of core proposition. And as well as uh, Visa, uh, I mentioned that we were the, the first bank to be part of a, a fintech and a box program for Southeast Europe, because they really saw an opportunity of an uh, organization which is <clears throat> challenging the norms of current uh, uh, banking, uh, banking business models uh, in the region. Moving on. Now, uh, this slide demonstrates uh, that uh, we have been scaling really our merchant partnerships, which we see as a core uh, uh, part uh, part of our business. Uh, we are completely agnostic in terms of which verticals to work with. Now, it's important to understand again that we really prefer verticals that are uh, not like Klarna's. Klarna works on uh, high velocity verticals, so this is usually fashion, apparel, etc. Uh, we are more in a firm space or some beat space, which is uh, um, kind of longer term, higher tickets, uh, uh, interest bearing, um, uh, usually uh, services and products. Whilst Clarin really goes for kind of true by now, pay later, which, which is which is free, free to the consumer. But ultimately, these customers don't re-engage well into the future paid products, which is exactly how we actually make our money on, on the lifetime value of a customer rather than just on, on the kind of one, uh, uh, one, one interaction with a customer. And we operate from marketplaces to auto dealers, to electronics, to furniture, as I said, medical. We even had babies, uh, we had financed uh, C-sections with our payment plans, right? So it could be dental, it could be anything really, cosmetics, etc. cetera. Uh, and, uh, um, we partner from largest players really to kind of mom and pop stores and we are agnostic whether it's uh, e-commerce, whether it's in store or hybrid, hybrid on card. 
And as you can see, the development, historical development of the checkout points has been very strong. So clearly the merchants uh, and our partners see value in what we're bringing and we are driving really increased sales for them. Moving on. Now, of course, all this is possible only on uh, modern architecture. So for, for us, really, technology is key. We're very much a, a tech-enabled bank. Uh, we uh, we really focus a lot into bringing some of the best solutions. We have our own development resources, which we keep on enlarging because we really truly believe that uh, 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 the future, our future is in, in, in being uh, the faster we can deploy and integrate, uh, the more uh, the, 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 the more competitive we will be. So we're really bringing kind of a hybrid of some of the best solutions globally uh, from the markets uh, and uh, deploying uh, also um, uh, some of our own development tools as well. Moving on. Now, the team. That's really the key. The team is ultimately who, who makes this happen. On one side, it's our supervisory board. And uh, our supervisory board, we have one representative from our shareholder for finance. And two other board members are independent to for finance. Uh, because we're really kind of uh, being a regulated business. We Even though we are we are part of for finance, but we run quite, quite, quite independently. We have to be. And ultimately, we have a slightly quite significantly, let's say, a, a different business model. The team is represented by over 50 nationalities. We're probably the most international business in the region. Uh, frankly, it's quite quite rare to have so, so many so, so many so many members of the team coming from multiple markets, which we believe is really part of our culture and a differentiating point. And these people are coming with experiences from you know, largest consulting companies like McKinsey or BCG to uh, people who were before in the regulator, which of course helps an understanding uh, much much better of our business model and uh, and um, helps us kind of drive uh, good good business and best practices. Moving on. Now, in 22, what have we been really focused on? Now, in 22, our key focus was on um, launching Greece and preparing our car to go live to market. Uh, in 23, uh, our key focus has been really kind of on moving our customer acquisition to more self-service channels, and we have already achieved that, as you saw in my earlier slides. And 24, 25 will be more about enriching our proposition and standardizing our stack across all three markets. So ultimately, we can deploy in one go across all three markets, uh, same, 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 same releases. On this side, I'm passing over to Lucas. Yes, I guess it's my uh, turn. Thank you, Peter. Uh, hello, everybody. So uh, I will give you a short story and about our funding activities and how we manage that. Uh, when we start the transformation of a bank in 2016, uh, we decided for ourselves that the funding uh, would be very important part uh, of our day-to-day uh, -day business activity. Not only because of you know we need to fund the business, but also we want, due to the situation uh, we are in, we want to uh, create a very sustainable, very robust uh, funding model, which will allow us not only to support the very fast business growth, which you know Peter talked, you know more than thirty percent on uh, quite extensive uh, period of time. Uh, but also to withstand any volatilities in the market, turbulences, and, and et cetera. So what we started, we said, let's um, put under one roof all uh, units which are engaged in the funding activities. You know, retail deposits, corporate deposits, treasury, money market, uh, wholesale funding, capital market, you know, in order to have very quick decision-making uh, possibilities to react uh, on the situation where to fund, taken into account the cost and risk. Next one, please. So this is uh, why we, uh, you can see now what, you know, sort of in terms of liability structure, uh, the predominant part of our funding comes from deposit money. We realize that uh, operating in EU markets and, you know, having very, uh, relatively and quite stable markets in Bulgaria, Romania, uh, and now Greece, uh, we have an opportunity to fund ourselves from the very stable, very granular deposit market. And this is why uh, you can see that, you know, 
90% comes uh, from deposits. Very small part comes from the capital market. We have few small deals, which I'm going to talk later on uh, in the book. But this is where we get the advantage, advantage in terms of cost and in terms of stability. We also very well capitalized. Uh, the beauty of our business is that we could, uh, we are self capital generating uh, institution, which allow us, you know, to support our growth. Next uh, slide, please. So talking about deposit and our strategic decision, what we want, you know, sort of to have that uh, very stable base on funding. We said, look, let's first diversify by the market. So we, we have ability to uh, fund ourselves in Bulgaria, in Romania. We have ability to fund in the largest European saving market, Germany. We don't do to mainly due to the cost disadvantage, but we have more as a backup. And we are planning to start probably operating uh, for the deposit governing activities in um, next year in Greece. So four markets in terms of diversification, seven channels. So we can offer online and offline, depends on their customer preferences. You can see that uh, the cost of euro, which is nearly around 90, uh, 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 around 60% uh, of our funding is very low. Uh, in uh, second quarter of the 2023, it was around 1%. It's going to increase going forward a little bit. You know, we expect that by the end of the year, it will be around 1.5%. However, it is much below the ECB benchmark, which we have. But on another side, we had uh, experience of increase, rapid increase of cost of funding in Romania due to the high inflation and the uh, policy of the central bank putting the uh, uh, base rates very high to 7%, which uh, uh, stimulated or in a way sort of put the market uh, cost of borrowing at around 8 and, 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 and a half percent. Uh, overall, uh, it's put our cost of funding when you blend all the currencies is around 3% currently. So Euro we see, but in 2024 will slightly increase. However, Romanian uh, currency borrowing will decrease, which will allow us counterbalance in a way on the fund. But what is, again, what most important, we fund ourselves much cheaper than the benchmark uh, from the central bank in US or in euros. Uh, also, what is important, but our uh, deposit uh, portfolio is very granular, very, sm uh, very small tickets. And it was strategic decision. We said, look, we don't want to get rich quickly, get quick large tickets, which will be in terms of uh, crisis, very unsustainable. They would leave first. So let us fund. Uh, and mainly give a priority to the tickets up to 100,000, which are guaranteed by the, uh, by the government. So this is why you see that it's nearly 100%, actually 93% of our retail uh, uh, deposit portfolio is uh, under um, uh, government protection scheme, which makes very stable, uh, very stable uh, funding for us. So I talked about capital markets and uh, look, having such a cheap cost of funding, such a low risk cost of funding, you know, in terms of volatility, we don't need capital markets, you know, sort of because we can uh, support our growth easily from different markets uh, uh, where we operate uh, using the deposit product. However, we... Uh, we launched small transaction locally in Bulgaria, 10 million uh, euros tier two bond, uh, specifically for capital optimization uh, purpose. And we did few small deals as well for MREL purpose. The problem with the local market, it is quite illiquid. So if we need a little bit larger amount, we need to go uh, abroad. And this is why we are... Uh, in the market with a relatively small but a little bit larger transaction than we ever done. For this reason, we acquired the uh, ratings from Moody's rating agency, 
We are rated uh, investment rating BA three for counterparty risk. We are uh, we are rated BA two for deposits, and this this bond it's expected to be rated BA three uh, one notch lower due to the uh, senior, uh, position on the liabilities uh, uh, scale, you know, of our of our book. Uh, next one, please. So this is my last slide, but I want to talk uh, about liquidity, and it's very important. As you can see, we have um, we're growing very fast, and uh, we said to ourselves, look, uh, we want also to keep the large buffer in terms of liquidity, and you can see that all our ratios are much higher than you know sort of market averages, you know sort of. However, for us, it's important and having such a fast growth, we want to have that liquidity, which we can employ, you know, sort of or deploy actually uh, into the uh, profitable projects. However, and not to miss certain opportunities. This is why uh, this deal, which we are doing up to 50 million, will be still very small in our overall ability structure. So for us, uh, to refinance that, we know we don't need to rely on the uh, on the capital markets. You know, we can easily re uh, uh, refinance uh, from our liquidity or raising quickly through the deposit. And this is the beauty uh, to have such a funding model. Uh, Costine, I think uh, it would be your turn. Thank you, Lucas. Um, now we'll go a little bit through the risk uh, area of the bank and uh, we can start on the right hand side with the graph showing what was the cost of risk during the last four years, including first half of uh, 2023. And as you can see, it's a very stable uh, cost of risk. So the performance of the portfolio is stable, although the portfolio grew on a yearly basis by 30 percent year on year. And how do we manage this uh, stability? We are managing this stability with all the data that we've collected for the past 2.2 million customers, plus all the new data sources that we are enhancing uh, and getting uh, more and more in order to uh, improve our risk uh, decisioning. Currently, we are having uh, seven credit uh, scorecards for applications, two fraud scorecards and uh, two behavioral scorecards in all the geographies for all the products and we are able to process 20 applications per minute with the risk decision engineering uh, with the instant to 30 seconds time to yes uh, and more than this we are having this uh, key feature that uh, Peter was speaking about which is the customer dynamic limit all the time we are scoring and rescoring the customers coming back to them with the most updated limit that they can tap on uh, and get the money uh, out uh, if we move to the next slide, we'll uh, be showing what we did in the last uh, period and also what's the focus for the next uh, period. So in the last period, we've managed to increase the data points from 600 to 760 by partnering up with a Hungarian startup, uh, through which we are getting 160 uh, data points uh, from if the customer has Viber or not, if the customer has WhatsApp, when it was last time seen on WhatsApp. LinkedIn, uh, Airbnb, Booking, and so on and so forth. And what is this data for? This data is to make us take a better decision and to approve the right customers while to reject the uh, potential uh, bad uh, customers. Uh, in terms of near-term plans, uh, uh, we are focusing on building and enhancing the data with uh, by tracking our mobile app usage by using the transactional data of uh, uh, our card where it is used how it is used uh, and in the same time uh, looking for open banking and actually we started a proof of concept in uh, uh, greece in july and we are transforming it now in business as usual uh, through getting the data of the customers directly from their current accounts with the other banks, again, helping the customer to get approved, but also helping us to get the right decision. If we move to the next slide, we are presenting what's the flow of the customer. So a summary of what I've mentioned up to now. So uh, Nikki, if we can move to the next slide, please. On the left side, the customer starts the journey with us. It's either through the mobile app, 
through the online stores or in the shop. Uh, the customer is coming and doing an application to us. We are collecting on one hand the data given by the customer. On the other hand, all the data from uh, external sources like credit bureaus, like uh, fiscal authorities, NSSI in Bulgaria, fiscal authority in uh, Romania, uh, plus all the digital data of the customer. Then it moves to Provenir, which is the risk decision engine. And Peter was mentioning that it's the same decision engine used by uh, Apple to issue the Apple card uh, by Klarna as well. And all the data is put there. We are uh, as well uh, managing the rules in Provenir. Our scorecard sit, sits there. And uh, based on all the rules implemented, we are giving a response to the customer, which is instant the 30 seconds. Uh, for the vast majority of our cases, 80 to 85 percent of them are getting an instant decision. The rest. Uh, our customers which are on the edge and uh, those are moved to human tech decision uh, and a person is reviewing the case in order to give the final uh, response uh, for the respective uh, uh, case. If we move now to the last slide of the risk area, we are presenting the evolution of the non-working portfolio uh, on the middle chart uh, in the page. Uh, we were starting somewhere at around 15% back in 2019. Uh, current level, we are at uh, 9% and uh, it's uh, the same level as end of 2022. This is a balance sheet view of uh, what is non-performant out of the entire portfolio. While the impairment coverage by provisions, it's 106%. This is at uh, uh, the uh, overall uh, product level, including with the business. Uh, banking. We are full IFRS 9 compliant. We are audited by Tier 1 auditor, Ernst & Young, and as well under uh, the scrutiny of uh, the central banks in the three markets in which we are uh, operating. This would be it on the credit risk, and then now I would pass the ball back to Peter. Justin, thank you very much. So guys, look, I'll go very quickly. I see the time is kind of is, is running. So key numbers that you can need to need to remember. Our revenue in the last 12 months uh, has been 183 million. Uh, the CET1 is at very healthy uh, 20 uh, above, actually uh, 20, uh, 20, 20 percent. The bank is continuing healthy growth, maintaining a healthy net interest margin and, and very healthy return on equity for a European uh, uh, business. Moving on. Now, as I mentioned again, our growth indicators have been very strong uh, on uh, both new business and uh, loan portfolio and uh, revenue and, and profitability. Very self-explanatory, so don't want to waste again the precious time of Q&A. Uh, as we scale, you see that our cost to income uh, is coming down. Of course, for, for us, we, we for us run the bank for profit, profitability. It's very important that we regenerate um, our own capital. Uh, so we are always kind of bottom line, uh, bottom line focused, and part of managing the bottom line is of course managing the costs uh, of organization. We do invest a lot, both into technology, into people, into going to new markets, into new product launches. Uh, but as we scale further and further, you see that cost of income coming down. So now onto the final slide before the Q and A. What do we guys want you to really remember about us? First of all, the TBI is a leading challenger bank in Southeast Europe. With a scalable business model, and again, historically, you can see how how, how it's been going. Uh, while being very prudent in terms of both the capital and liquidity ratios, uh, utilizing the latest technology and uh, advancements in terms of uh, both developing the infrastructure of a bank, but really kind of core focus on our lending sophistication. And I'm truly proud of what we do because I, I think that for European markets, we're probably amongst, if not the leaders in terms of the way we do it, but definitely amongst amongst the leaders in in, in credit credit side so side of side of a business. But the business had historical uh, strong um, uh, financial track record, and we uh, aim to maintain it like this because we truly believe that successful bank is a bank that is that is profitable, that is that that, that, is, that is developing uh, well, and of course this is all underpinned by the experienced management team with the experience sort of coming from multiple markets, multiple geographies, uh, <clears throat> and multiple backgrounds. And that's very important. You see that that team has been very stable. 
uh, in the bank uh, growing and uh, developing further and further. On this note, thank you very much, and uh, we look forward to the Q&A. Let me show you now in a map where the bond will be placed, because uh, in this case, I selected, for example, using Seabonds platform. I see we have also some Seabonds clients that also use the platform. So we selected Eastern Europe corporate, so banks, bank sector uh, of uh, euro bonds uh, with a maturity up to 2030 and issue rating starting from B. So that's the range of the bond you are going to issue. And we can see where it will where it will be placed. So it will be here. It's really an interesting resting bond according also to the to the information that we just received about about the bank um while i'm showing this graph can i ask you a question that we received from many people so why did you choose the sweden so the nasdaq nordic for listing and uh, uh, a sweden norway based investment bank uh, which is abg sondal collier as a lead mean as a lead manager because it looks like you will be the first uh, uh, bulgarian bank who listed bonds on nasdaq norway so why not vienna that's the the most interesting question we have now okay good question uh and i have a very rational uh answer cost uh being first time issuer and having such a small issue or fifth, uh, you know, sort of, and again, you know, sort of, we're saying up to 50 million, but we have flexibility to, if we need, you know, to downsize, you know, sort of. Uh, it is cost is important because, you know, you, you pay, uh, you know, if you go to London, you pay a uh, huge cost to lawyers, uh, to the big guys um, uh, in London or in whatever, you know, sort of, or Germany, you know, sort of, who will demand very different money. And for the, such a small issue, for, for them, economics needs to be, you know, sort of reasonable. Uh, this is why uh, we chose Nordic market, because it is a relatively liquid market. And it's not only about Nordic investors, it's about any kind of investor, but it is would be listed on the Stockholm uh, Nasdaq exchange. The cost is uh, important because the documentation, uh, it is quite simple. Uh, second is the cost of lawyers and, you know, investment bankers, uh, relatively slightly cheaper. And also ABG had good track record with our parents group, uh, for finance. Again, it was not, uh, something imposed from them or, ex and et cetera. However, for us, it was important to have that, you know, sort of, uh, continuity. So this is few reason why we know we chose, uh, Nordic markets and Stockholm uh, Stock Exchange for placing NABG as a lead manager. Perfect. Thank you very much. Do you want to add something else regarding this question? I think it's fair enough. Yeah, um, I, I can pick also on the, on the market. Market is, look, uh, market is not ideal. Uh, we know that. And, uh, but, you know, can we wait for ideal market? We are doing for ourselves, again, it is not funding exercise. It's more regulatory driven exercise because we can fund much cheaper and it's very expensive for us. You know, this is why you, uh, I show we, we didn't do or we didn't fund ourselves from a capital market and we don't need. However, due to regulatory reason, uh, uh, we need to do that. Uh, however, we do more pre-funding. And reason is, but we are growing very fast and we don't want to miss on opportunities, let's say next year, you know, looking for the funding. Uh, uh, and if there is, again, market is not ideal, we need to scale down the business. It's easy. We could scale uh, uh, lower the growth rate and grow as most of the banks grow, but we see much more opportunities in the markets which we operate and we don't want to uh, miss. And as Peter said, you know, sort of, we are all about, you know, uh, profitability, be profitable. Perfect, perfect. Um, do you plan to execute 1.75 year corruption? You're muted, Lucas. Thank you, Peter, yes. Uh, people probably can read my lips already. <laughs> uh, I've been talking quite a bit. Uh, yes. Uh, because it doesn't make sense for us to keep longer uh, because it becomes funding instrument, not regulatory instrument. Umbrella eligibility uh, has one of the criteria. It needs to have uh, more than one year uh, remaining maturity. So 
If it passes, it becomes doesn't count as MREL, as a regulatory instrument, and counts as a funding. Funding compared with deposits, one, one and a half percent on euros, 10 plus something, you know, that is clearly economical uh, reason to call that. I hope I answered. Yeah. Simon is asking, uh, can you please give more information about the process of investment in the bonds? So what are the exact dates of the paying of the interest rate? Uh, in addition, in which days we can subscribe for the bonds? Okay, good question. Uh, currently, we uh, this week we are meeting with investors. Uh, we are road showing, and we expect to you know we have uh, uh, last meeting I think on 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 Monday uh, noon. Uh, so this is the road show where we meet the investors. We planning you know sort of probably to try to close the book uh, next week. So this is the period which you know sort of people can approach us or our lead manager, ABG, uh, to get more information or register their interest. Um, you are now planning uh, this bond issue in a moment of uh, quite sharp interest uh, rate hikes. Uh, if we take, for example, German bonds as a risk-free uh, rate for euro area, it rose from zero in the beginning of 2022 to almost 3% now. So Bulgarian government bonds yield jump up to 5%. So your bonds will be probably in an over 10% area. Uh, why you decide to start funding right now in a moment of high rates? We already discussed it, but maybe we, it would be interesting to repeat a bit the process. Now, why even now you would like to go ahead with this uh, funding? Yeah, very interesting. When? Tell me when, when it's going to be good and we will go, you know, sort of. So... This is where we have the question again. We, for us, the cost is important, but more important missing opportunities in business. This is what you know. What in the previous presentation you saw what we are growing very fast and we are profitable and we are we are not one of these large banks which you know comes with a, a lot of you know uh, decision making centers and say, look, in this country we need to do the same as in another country. You know, sort of. Doesn't matter if it's profitable or not. We do because we see the business opportunity and we see what we're bringing value to the customers. By bringing value to the customers, we get, you know, sort of uh, our business right. So, so for us, uh, the business opportunities, missed opportunities, more important. As I said, we're doing, doing pre-funding. Uh, we don't need anything for this year. We're doing for the next year. But we are afraid a little bit, but next year is going to might be again volatile. And if we need to slow down on the business, which we can uh, do, you know, sort of, uh, uh, it would be not, you know, sort of um, not uh, smart to do. So it's better to do now, taking certain uh, risk and maybe a little bit cost. Cost is also for us because it's our debit and small uh, e issue. Uh, and small issue, we understand what we need to pay a little bit liquidity premium, you know, but because of the maturity and maturity is quite short. So, you know, sort of it's ideal for somebody, you know, to keep to maturity and really earn good return on that. Perfect. Thank you very much. I think uh, we are set now. I think all our uh, participants have all the right information to take a decision and to go ahead with these interesting board issues. So thank you very much, colleagues, for joining us today. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Kostin. Uh, thank you uh, for joining us today. Uh, and Lucas as well, of course. Uh, I hope to see you soon for a new board issues, maybe. Who knows? So thank you very much and uh, have a nice day. Thank you guys for thank coming to listen to us. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.